Americans with weak immune systems could be getting another layer of defense against COVID-19. Details on the decision the FDA is still to make today. A busy morning at the Texas Capitol, a more than 10 hour long filibuster coming to an end at a voting bill that's been at the center of a lot of debate passed in the Senate. But why this measure is once again stalled. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say that a driver came out blasting, firing a gun after crashing her car. When that shooting had stopped, both she and a man were dead. This happened in a west side neighborhood on Hazel Street near Frio City Road. As Katrina Weber reports, police are still trying to make sense of the violence. As they hurried toward the 400 block of Hazel Street, San Antonio police officers initially thought they'd be investigating a car crash. They soon found out, though, that what happened before 10 last night was much more. Police say a 28-year-old woman had, in fact, crashed into a parked car, but she also created a commotion that escalated to deadly violence. Residents concerned neighbors coming out, checking on the, uh, the suspect in the suspect vehicle at that point. They are uh, fired upon for uh, some unknown, unprovoked reason. Police say the woman who caused the crash is the one who fired first, hitting three people. One of them was the 48-year-old owner of the parked car she hit. He died of his wounds. Another woman and 18-year-old man were critically wounded. During the shooting, a neighbor from a nearby residence uh, intervenes, comes to the aids of the victims, opens fire on our suspect, striking her multiple times. The driver also died from her wounds. Police are calling her the suspect in this case. They say the neighbor who shot her most likely won't face charges, although they're still investigating. Among the many questions that investigators still have are how and why things escalated from a car crash to deadly violence. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The city's proposed budget for the 2022 fiscal year being presented today. The city budget will surpass $3 billion for the first time in history. Tiffany Wirtis live in downtown with more on that. So Tiffany, that's a lot of money. What are some of the investments they're actually focus focusing on with all this money this year? That is a lot of money, David. Now they're adding street lights, talking about sidewalk repairs, investing in public health and adding police officers. Those are just some of the issues and topics that were discussed this morning. City Manager Eric Walsh presented the budget, which is projected at $3.1 billion. That breaks down to $1.36 billion that will go to the general fund that will support most basic city services, including police, fire, streets, parks, libraries, $1.12 billion of restricted funds will go to the airport fund, development services, hotel occupancy tax, solid waste, and grants. And the remaining of $592 million will go to capital programs, including airport projects. Another key message from this morning's meeting is investment in public health. This morning, they were talking about $16.3 million increase in funding for this section. $4 million in coordinated response to address domestic violence and mental health are certainly the resources that we will continue to have available uh, to address uh, uh, COVID-19 through the grants we, we specifically receive from the federal government, our health implementation uh, funds, as well as ARPA. The city sales tax revenue for the 2022 fiscal year is projected to be 11 percent higher than in 2019. The city's hotel industry continues to feel the impact of the pandemic. The hotel occupancy tax for the 2022 fiscal year is projected to be 24 percent lower compared to 2019. Now, city council is scheduled to vote on this budget on September 16. Council members will be holding different town hall meetings over the next few weeks. And later today at five and six, we're going to be breaking down some of these issues. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. Flames forced a family out of their east side home and left behind a trail of questions for the San Antonio Fire Department. Crews found the fire in the 300 block of Olive Street just off of Hackberry. Stephen Gabasso spoke with a man who says he tried to fight those flames before firefighters got there.
Now things have since quieted down in this east side neighborhood, but hours earlier there were multiple fire crews in and out of this house where they say a suspicious fire broke out. The San Antonio Fire Department arrived on the scene just after 830 this morning. According to an SAFD spokesman, the fire started on the outside of the home and made its way into the attic. Danny Garcia was home with his aunt and two cousins. He says he woke up to the smell of smoke and opened the door to find a burning bag on the porch. Garcia says he tried to put out that fire, but things went from bad to worse. Now I, I go to the kitchen, I throw some water on it, and when I throw the water on it, it explode, you know what I'm saying? They go up against the wall, go up on the ceiling, it cut me in the arm a little bit. Thankfully, SEFD was able to knock out the flames within minutes and no injuries were reported. Because of the high heat and humidity, other crews were on standby in the event they needed to be rotated in. Now, while the exact cause has not been released, arson is expected to continue that investigation. The cause of damage has also not been revealed, but we are told that Red Cross has stepped in and will be assisting the family. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 vaccines. The FDA expected to authorize COVID booster shots for the immunocompromised. More than 75,000 patients are currently hospitalized with COVID across the country. That includes 1,284 COVID-19 patients in Bear County. The latest figure released yesterday is higher than the previous day. According to the seven day average, more than 1300 cases of coronavirus continue to pop up each day in Bear County. But those with weak immune systems could be getting another layer of a defense against the virus. The CDC says more than a million people have already reportedly gotten a third shot, even without FDA authorization. Some are getting theirs through clinical trials for booster shots. You need to protect yourself, and right now the vaccination is the key uh, aspect of our efforts to stem the pandemic. A CDC advisory panel is expected to meet on Friday to discuss those booster shots, and from there, the CDC director will have the official green light. To Back to school season in full swing, and a local school district wants to give parents some flexibility if they're worried about keeping their children safe during the pandemic. Northeast ISD is launching a virtual learning bridge program so children can do their coursework online. It's for students in grades K through 6 who are identified as immunocompromised or live with family members who have compromised immune systems. NAISD says students will be considered for the virtual learning bridge program based on specific criteria and medical documentation. The program officially starts August 30th. Applications must be submitted by August 20th. You can learn more on the district's website. It is listed on your screen right there. And I want to invite you that if you have any questions as you navigate the new school year, I hosted a back to school virtual town hall yesterday. We actually did two all together. They're both right now available on KSET.com. Uh, the uh, subject matter, kids going back to school. What do we do? <laughs> you can find it in the back to school section of KSAT.com. Two elementary schools on the city's west side are undergoing major changes to implement a new curriculum that will give students more opportunities for advanced learning. Las Palmas is now an all-girls leadership school, while Roy Cisneros is an elementary that's going to serve all boys. The change comes as schools switch over to an international baccalaureate po program. Alicia Beretta visited the new Las Palmas Leadership School for Girls. She explains how school officials hope the changes empower young minds. Good afternoon. In just a few years, Las Palmas Leadership School for Girls is set to become the first all-girls IB school in the state of Texas. And we spoke to administrators who say, yes, they're educating these young girls, but they truly believe they're also changing the world. The halls of Las Palmas Elementary and Roy Cisneros may look the same, but their respective classroom curriculum transition to International Baccalaureate, or IB, a worldwide education program focused on advanced learning and character development. The dual language campuses have been years in the making thanks to the partnership between Edgewood ISD and the nonprofit organization Texas Council of International Studies or TCIS. It's a transdisciplinary where they're seeing how does math interact with science? How, what is my role in the social studies and in the reading and how all of the units 
blend in together. This is an opportunity for them to receive a world-class education. Many people um, pay up to $30,000 to $100,000 for this type of education, and this is an education we are providing for free for our students here. Administrators say this is going to be a game changer for students, not only on the west side, but for any student in Bear County. Both are still accepting new students, so if you're a parent interested in learning more about what services are included or what clubs or organizations are offered to the students, you can head over to KSAT. Com. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. A contentious voting measure passed in the Texas Senate just a few hours ago. This came after a state senator ended a hours long filibuster. It was the Democrats' latest act of defiance over a sweeping GOP voting measure. Democrat Carol Alvarado began speaking shortly before six last night even though she acknowledged that the filibuster would not stop the measure from passing. The Republican-controlled Texas Senate then passed the measure just minutes after she left the floor. However, the voting measure stalled again, and that's because Democrats continue to stay away from the floor of the State House of Representatives in a standoff that has now entered a 30-second day. Today and for the next few days, our rain chances are going to be on the very low side. However, that will start to change second half of the weekend with some scattered rain possible by Sunday. Details coming up. Also coming up this half hour, more from Olympic gold medal winner Keldon Johnson, the Spur, coming up with Larry Mares in sports. quite rodeo uh, time not yet, but it's coming it's too warm <laughs> but we still can get excited about it more of the lineup announced this morning yeah the latest list includes some pretty big names tanya tucker tim mcgraw goes both going to be playing shows here in san antonio three doors down and ryan bam also going to take part this in addition to the other acts which are already announced including toby keith Brad Paisley, Night Ranger, and Styx. You can watch them or catch them at the rodeo next year. It all starts February 10th. And the Texas State Fair is right around the corner. The fair actually announced the 10 finalists that will compete for titles in the 2021 Big Tex Choice Awards competition. The categories include best taste, savory, best taste, sweet, and most creative. Some of the finalists, deep fried I-35, that's a fried kolache topped with brisket and barbecue sauce Ooh. made with peach juice uh, and, of course, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. There's also brisket brittle. It's like peanut brittle, but with brisket instead of peanuts. And for all of those who are ready for fall, and I know Katie Blake is all about this deep fried Halloween, it's a pretzel that's fried, topped with candy corn syrup, wow. rainbow sprinkles, powdered sugar, buttercream icing, and Halloween candy. I'm sure it smells like pumpkin spice. It all comes with chocolate and caramel syrup. So if you're keeping track, that's three kinds of syrup on a pretzel. The Texas State Fair will open on Friday, September 24th, and it'll run through Sunday, October 17th. Whoa. That one sounds pretty good. Yeah. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly's right. <laughs> Live cam uh, showing us another warm, humid day. Uh, kind of just like yesterday. Uh, yes, if you've noticed this week, we've just kind of copied and pasted the weather forecast from day to day. And generally that's going to continue through about half of the weekend and then we'll bump up rain chances by Sunday. We'll talk about that coming up shortly. First, the aquifer today is down half a foot to 665.6 and in your pollen count. Mold is our lone allergen today. It's still moderate like it was yesterday, but the count did fall a bit from where it was on Wednesday. So a little improvement in our Thursday pollen count. We'll talk rain chances coming up next. All right, it's time to stick up for the weather department. I mean, she says cut and paste, but still, it's not that easy to forecast. Somebody's got to cut and paste day, it. And somebody's got to do that. But, you <laughs> yeah. know, you guys work hard all the time trying to figure all this mess out. Thank you. You're welcome. And it won't be copy and paste for forever, right? And right. we've been really fortunate this summer. We've, we've had some good rainy streaks. We haven't hit 100 yet at the airport in San Antonio. So there that, you go. That's something. That and we had Persia, Persia, how do you say it? Persia? 
showers. Oh, the meteor shower. The meteor shower last yeah. night too. So but there's stuff happening. There's always something. We got tropical depression Fred to talk about. We're good. We are good. I will fill my time. <laughs> that is for sure. I want to start off talking with rain chances, which may seem odd because it's been a, a rain free week essentially. And for the next few days, including today, our rain chances are going to be minimal and they're mainly going to be confined down to uh, the coastal bend in areas closer to the Gulf Coast, south and east of San Antonio. But you'll notice, though, by the second half of the weekend, early next week, our rain chances do jump up into the scattered category. Uh, so we do have that to look forward to as well. Currently just hot out there. Air temperature is in white heat index or what it feels like to our bodies when you factor in the humidity. That's the number in yellow here in San Antonio. Our heat index is up to 93, but in Pleasanton it's already up to 101. It's up to 100 in Gonzales, so plenty steamy out there. Our dew points are still high. We're going to have a little bit of a breeze this afternoon. Winds generally about 10 to 15 miles per hour and enjoy that today because the breeze really falls off the board tomorrow and all the way through the weekend. So southeast winds this afternoon 10 to 15 miles per hour air temperatures for most of us will jump into the mid to upper 90s spots from Del Rio all the way down to Catula certainly could touch the century mark this afternoon and again minimal chances of rain and you could probably guess where that minimal chance of rain is going to be this afternoon area south and east of San Antonio uh, zooming into these little non severe showers that have moved in along the sea breeze here they are trying their hardest to drift north so Hallettsville generally east of Highway 77 there. Keep an eye out for one of these little thunder showers moving in within the next hour, uh, and you may have some of that blow off cloud cover from some of those uh, smaller thunderheads as well. As we head through the rest of the afternoon, you'll notice Futurecast does keep the stray thunder showers down confined south and east of San Antonio. This particular model does want to bring a few in along the sea breeze to the I-35 corridor through about 7, 8 p.m. this evening. I do think closer to that time, any activity will be starting to fizzle out. Nonetheless, we'll hold into a very low chance of a stray thunder shower through about 8 o'clock this evening. After that, rain chances fall off the board. Tomorrow, first half of the day, will be a lot like today. Morning clouds breaking through to a mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon and another chance generally south and east of San Antonio of an afternoon shower or non severe storm that will also continue into the first half of the weekend on Saturday. But as we get into Sunday, early part of next week, our rain chances coverage wise will start to become a bit more scattered and they'll become focused generally along and north of the Highway 90 corridor. So here's a quick look at what one Futurecast model thinks things could look like Sunday afternoon. This is a bit overdone just because we're still several days out, but you get the idea here as we get into the heat of the day Sunday and again on Monday, we're likely going to have a scattering of some showers and thunderstorms out um, across the area, especially north of Highway 90. So if your weekend plans include some outdoor activities on Sunday, just keep that in the back of your mind. And of course, we'll keep you updated as those slightly higher rain chances get closer. Quickly checking in on tropical depression, Fred. It has really weakened over land over the past 12 to 24 hours. It is expected to become a tropical storm again by sometime tomorrow, passing over the Florida Keys and South Florida into early on Saturday and then dropping a lot of rain over a good portion of the Sunshine State all the way through the weekend. Of course, no impacts for us here along the Texas Gulf Coast will mainly just be staying very hot through the first half of the weekend before those slightly better chances of rain kick in by Sunday. Guys. Thank you so much, Katie. So you got to give her credit. That was a lot of work right there. She did give. Yeah, it was not just a cut and paste. <laughs> Speaking of work, so Waste Camp needs a little work, but all you got to do is make some threes. Just, just make threes and you'll be fine. Shooter's got to shoot, and his thing is he's a rookie, as we all know. Yeah. And whether it's the summer league or whether he's playing in the NBA regular season, most rookies don't want to, you know, cause waves. They want to keep team play going and not worry as much about their stats. So, yes, Joe is clearly learning his way. And when it comes to Dak Prescott and his right throwing shoulder, the Cowboys say they're just playing it safe. Coming up. I would like to play in that game, but it's, uh, I've got to keep progressing the right way. And as long as I don't have any setbacks, um, we'll when we get to that, that crossroads, we'll, we'll obviously talk to the doctors, coaches, and figure out what's best. Dak Prescott hopes to play in the Cowboys' third preseason game in Big Board Sports.
Spurs will resume Las Vegas Summer League play this afternoon at 2 with the Charlotte Hornets. No word yet of Devin Vassell, who's dealing with a tight hamstring, will play, or if rookie guard Joshua Primo will go after sitting out the last game due to a coach's decision. Spurs second-round draft pick Joe Wieskamp is coming off his best Summer League game with 11 points Tuesday night in the Spurs loss. Wieskamp has struggled this summer in part because he's trying to find his way all while playing team ball. I've never been a selfish player, um, so I've just always been a team first guy trying to, you know, run through the offense. And at summer league, it's a little bit different. You know, um, it's more. Um, it sounds bad, but at the end of the day, guys are trying to get jobs. Guys are trying to get paid. So um, you just got to fight through that and just try to play within yourself and not try to do too much. Um, that's that's what I've been trying to do. Gold medal winner Kelton Johnson was at the Spurs game Tuesday night and he held an in-game interview to talk about gold and the Spurs upcoming season. It's big, you know, it's a great accomplishment. I'm definitely uh, honored and blessed to be able to compete uh, for the United States of America. And um, that was just the biggest part, you know, putting the USA across my chest and uh, bringing home the gold is, is what we prepare for. Uh, we just want to get out there, you know, play hard and, and hopefully win some games. You know, um, we definitely going to get out there and play together, you know, and uh, set the tone and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we have a successful season. Keldon will meet with local media this afternoon via Zoom to talk about Team USA and winning gold. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys will break training camp in Oxnard, California today. I mean, that's all she wrote. The time. QB Dak Prescott will not play in that game and he hopes to see the field in preseason game number three Saturday, August 21st when the boys host the Texans. Once Dak gets back to Dallas, he plans to get a precautionary MRI on his right throwing shoulder. Team says no need to be alarmed. It's not a setback. They're just being safe. Now when it comes to throwing, Dak is taking baby steps. Yeah, I mean, every day we're progressing every day. I mean, today was more, I'd say, than yesterday. Um, and definitely the intensity was more today than it was yesterday. So uh, that's just the goal is just keep raising it each and every day. Uh, keep pushing it, but um, not pushing it past the threshold. You know, we're going to push it to this level, then we're going to get there. We're going to push it to that level and then we're going to go again. And um, it's not about making that, that that quick, that jump too fast. And that's all he was saying is um, he's helping me, as I said, protect protect myself from, from, from doing more to it. Because as I said, I just I get going and I'm a competitor and that's just the way I, the way it is. And yeah. Dak feels he will be ready for the season opener September 9th at Tampa Bay. This is better to be pushing than pulling. I, don't know. <laughs> I guess so, right? <laughs> A lot of pushing forward. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. You might see your plane ticket prices begin to go down as less people jump at the chance to take a vacation. Coming up in your next half hour, signs of a summer travel slowdown as COVID cases surge. And good news for millions of students still paying off their student loans. A pause on federal student loan payments has been extended again. What this means for you coming up after the break. The Census Bureau just released some new population data. The figures show continued migration to the south and southwest and population losses in the Mississippi Delta and Appalachia. The numbers also indicate that the white, house, white population is aging and has fallen into its smallest share of the total population on record. The population under age 18 is increasingly diverse. Population data used to draw congressional and state legislative district lines. However, the figures came more than four months later than usual. Those who are weighed down by student loan debt will get a little bit of relief. A pause on federal student loan payments was extended again, this time until January of next year. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains what it means for students and why some say the extension isn't enough. A renewed break from federal student loan payments. President Biden extending a freeze on monthly bills for millions of Americans. Student debt is impacting every aspect of people's lives, right? So we're at $1.7 trillion for 44 million people. Balances were initially suspended in March 2020 during the earliest days of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pause was set to expire at the end of September, now extended until the end of January 2022. Ashley Harrington of the Center for Responsible Lending says the extension could level the playing field for borrowers, especially students of color who rely on loans for for their higher education. 
there are so many black and brown families who make a middle class income, but are unable to live a middle class lifestyle because the student debt is holding them back from doing all the things we'd associate with middle class, right? Buying a house starting a business, saving for retirement. The extension now giving borrowers almost two years of relief from those monthly payments. During that time, interest has stopped adding up, saving the average borrower about $2,000 over the first year. But advocacy groups like the student debt crisis say it's not enough and are asking President Biden to cancel student debt by executive order to stimulate the economy. The domino effect has been that when folks have high student debt payments, a thousand, two thousand per month, they can't buy houses, they can't buy cars, they aren't able to make small purchases to help that small business out. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Collections on defaulted debt are also on hold. Private student loan borrowers aren't covered by the paused extension. Today, President, rather rising prescription price prescriptions pardon me, prescription drug prices. It's a big concern for a lot of people and drug companies are raising prices on more than 500 different medications this year. New legislation aims to lower those prices and today President Biden called on lawmakers to push measures that would lower drug prices in several ways, including allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices and imposing penalties on drug makers that hike prices faster than the inflation rate. During remarks, the president laid out his vision to help reduce the cost for prescription medications as part of his Build Back Better agenda. He is seeking to push through Congress. The latest surge in COVID-19 cases putting a strain on hospitals across the country, and that includes some here in Texas. Houston's LBJ Hospital says 63% of the ICU patients have COVID, and it's at 100% capacity, and that's why it's at intense though has the overflow COVID-19 patients. Uh, the goal of this tent is, is actually multifold. The single biggest thing it does is, is it provides us uh, flexibility and maneuverability so that as the needs for patient care change, we have an additional footprint and more space that we can use uh, to adjust to what is, what is you know, predicted to be a changing need um, and, a, and a changing sort of number of patients that are coming in. Now, while the tents may help with overflow capacity of COVID-19 patients, the hospital admits they don't have the staff to operate them currently. The state health department is deploying 2,500 medical personnel to help hospitals, but it's unclear how many would come here to San Antonio. And the surge in cases also seems to be affecting the travel industry. After months of soaring passenger numbers during the pandemic, there are new signs of a potential slowdown. The TSA reporting it screened the lowest number of people in almost two months on Tuesday. And Southwest Airlines said this week that it is seeing more cancellations now, blaming the spread of the Delta variant. Industry-wide experts say demand is flatlining for domestic flights and dropping for international flights. The demand in searches is dropping as well, and that is already affecting the ticket price. The average round-trip ticket has already dropped by about $30. We're expecting domestic airfare to continue dropping maybe another 10% going into September. We are seeing an uptick in users purchasing a cancel for any reason policy up about 33% since early July. If you have a trip plan, doctors say you and your family may not need to cancel it. However, you do need to consider the risk and be thoughtful about what you're doing and how you're doing it when gone. So the weather will be good for those staycations then, apparently. <laughs> if you like, if you like hot, yes. <laughs> It'll be good. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's good pool weather, um, and we expect it to be hot this time of year. So haven't hit 100 at the airport here in San Antonio, and I don't have any triple digits on the extended forecast. So at least we've got that going for us. Taking a look at satellite and radar, also your temperatures. We've got plenty of sunshine after some morning clouds. We'll keep some fair weather clouds for the most part around this afternoon. Those of you south and east of San Antonio have a better shot 
at seeing one of those taller cumulus clouds that may have a little bit of rain coming out of it. We will carry a small chance of a stray thunder shower closer to the coast today. 88 now at the airport. Our dew point is still in the low 70s, so that makes it feel like the low to mid 90s. Thankfully, we'll carry a decent breeze again today. Winds out of the southeast about 10 to 15 miles per hour through the hottest part of the day. So we'll have that breeze to help us out just a little bit, but it's still going to feel hot out there. High temperatures will max out mid to upper 90s. But for most of us, the heat index will be anywhere between 100 and 105 this afternoon. So certainly toasty. And there's that very, very minimal chance for rain. Uh, this time three months ago, 44% of the state of Texas was in drought. Uh, and that included a large portion of our area here across South Central Texas. We still had a big portion of the area in extreme, even exceptional drought. Happy to report that as of today, only 1.4% of the state is in drought. And we are doing very well here in South Central Texas. Nonetheless, a little bit of rain this time of year always helps to cool things off a bit, and we do have slightly better rain chances coming up as early as Sunday. We'll talk more about that coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thanks, Katie. From karma chameleons to robot chameleons, is there nothing this lizard can't inspire? We're going to take a look at engineers in South Korea. They think this invention has the potential to lead to a real life invisibility cloak. Details ahead. Not sure Kevin Costner's gonna be there, but we are headed to the Field of Dreams for some real baseball. Larry Mears with that coming up. You've probably heard of kegs and eggs, but what about Pilsner and pancakes? IHOP looking for ways to make customers consider IHOP for more than just breakfast. So if IHOP makes you think of only pancakes, then there's the problem the leaders of that company are having and trying to solve. So now some restaurants are selling alcohol. The restaurant chain is offering beer and wine at some of its locations. It's still not clear if your local IHOP is going to be serving up booze in the near future. Most locations are owned by franchise, and it's up to them to decide whether or not they want to offer the alcohol. Some may opt out due to the expense of obtaining a liquor license and training staff. IHOP's president says he believes eventually about 1,000 of the chain's 1,700 locations will serve alcohol. Meantime, engineers in South Korea think a small robotic chameleon has some big potential. They say it can mimic its backgrounds just like a real chameleon. The robotic chameleon comes equipped with a custom-made color-changing coat. The electronic skin is linked to sensors on the robot's belly. They relay the information to heaters that adjust the skin's temperature producing the colors. The engineers say the tech could be used to create smart military camo, and it would be the next step toward real life invisibility. Ooh. Should Boy George be now, involved in that somehow? Oh, you're gonna have to sing the song now, because <laughs> you just lost everybody who's under the age of 40. <laughs> you made Don laugh over there. Do you there. know what it is? <laughs> yes. Well, no, 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 I'm not going to sing it. Yeah. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, good. You've been very musical today, David. 9 a.m., you were referencing songs. Very, very <laughs> musical. Very musical. The aquifer today is down half a foot to 665.6. And we've got a pretty decent pollen count. Mold is still moderate, but it's down a little bit from where it was yesterday. We'll take a look at current radar. Get you ready for the next few days coming up. It's only 89 degrees. That's not bad. <laughs> it would it's, be okay if it stopped here. Be well, it's been 89 degrees at this time for a few days now, yeah. but check back around 530. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, it won't still be 89. And uh, our weather has been kind of stuck in a rut this week, but uh, very seasonable for this time of year. Speaking of this time of year, of course, we're approaching the peak of uh, activity as far as uh, uh, climatologically speaking in the Atlantic Basin. And we've got a new tropical depression. This is Tropical Depression Fred. As of the uh, 1 p.m. update, so this is brand new information, still tropical depression status. Movement is west-north 
northwest at 14 miles per hour. Uh, this system, as it has moved across some uh, of the higher terrain of the Dominican Republic here, it has really, really weakened. And in fact, this is very telling the satellite picture. Normally, when we're looking at stronger, more organized tropical systems, all this cloud cover, the yellow and the red, will be very tightly organized around the center of circulation. But look how far removed it all is. It's very messy. Essentially, it just doesn't have its act together. Now it is moving back over open water north of Cuba, and that's the trek it will continue to uh, move through today into the day tomorrow, eventually approaching South Florida and the Florida Keys very late Friday into early on Saturday. So as it gets back over open water, which again is fuel for tropical systems, it is expected to uh, uh, strengthen slightly back to tropical storm status as it kind of rides along the west coast of Florida there in the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the course of the weekend. So it is going to be a rainy, messy weekend uh, for our friends over in the Sunshine State. Not very sunny this weekend. Meanwhile, here at home, a sneak peek at your weekend forecast. Uh, it's still going to be hot, low to mid 90s both Saturday and Sunday. But we will pick up a slightly better chance of rain by the second half of the weekend on Sunday. Out there currently, it is hot. We're already seeing some heat index readings. That's the yellow number uh, near 100, even several degrees above 100. And the heat index will continue to stay elevated this afternoon, generally 100 to 105, because we've got these very high dew points. For most of us, they're in the 70s. They may fall off a few degrees this afternoon, but not enough to make a difference. So even though our air temperatures will be reading mid to upper 90s, it'll feel more like 100 up to about 105 for a lot of us. So stay hydrated if you'll be out there this afternoon. Very, very minimal chances of rain through about sunset, and that's generally going to be for areas south and east of San Antonio. Hallettsville, just an update for you. You do have a couple of showers trying to move in from the south. We've also got some blow off cloud cover moving into Cuero and DeWitt County from some of these small thunderheads that are trying their best to move in from the Gulf of Mexico. For the rest of the afternoon, some of this activity again will try to move closer to the I-10 corridor, maybe even I-35 through about sunset. So that's why we'll hold on to that minimal chance of rain but the overwhelming majority of us won't see any rain today. And we'll have a very similar story tomorrow as we wrap up the work week. Again, chance of rain in the afternoon south and east of San Antonio. Slightly more active weather pattern second half of the weekend into early next week will give us a better chance at some scattered showers and storms. Timing here Sunday into Monday is going to be during the heat of the day, so the afternoon through the early and mid evening hours. So keep that in mind if you've got outdoor plans for your Sunday. And of course, we'll keep you updated on that weekend rain chance over the coming days. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Madison High School alum Vincent Taylor is preparing for his first season with the Houston Texans and his fifth in the NFL. He was drafted by the Dolphins where he played for two seasons. Then he played one season each for Buffalo and Cleveland and now he's with the Texans. And one of the perks about joining Houston, Vincent now lives in the same city as his older brother. It's good, you know, I'm, uh, people always ask me that, you know, I'm very close with my family, you know, after everything we didn't been through with Katrina, you know, I think that brought, that brought us closer, so just to be out here in Houston with him, you know, it's not like when I was in Miami, he got to get on the plane to come see me, you know, he's not too far, so I'm, a, I'm very family oriented, so to be in the same city and the state with him, uh, it's, it's good. Vincent said his brother stopped by practice this week and that his dad was in Houston visiting him. Tonight, the New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox will play ball in the Field of Dreams game in Dyersville, Iowa. The field they're using is located near the original field used in the 1989 hit movie because, and here's the distance between the fields, because that field doesn't meet MLB guidelines. Here's KCRG reporter Michael Bryan. The moment you step onto the property at the Field of Dreams, you immediately feel like you're in the movie itself. You can even ask that to some of the actors that were in the movie. You know, this is like an amusement park. It's so, so beautiful. Fans will get to walk through the cornfield from the original Field of Dreams towards the MLB Stadium upon entry. There, they'll be greeted by a maze and cardboard cutouts of the players before eventually getting to the ballpark. I have to say, this is as magical 
a, a structure as the as the small field was when we first came down here to, to shoot the movie. The dimensions are similar to a normal MLB park, 335 down each baseline and 400 to straightaway center, but even the architects of the site don't know if it will favor pitchers or hitters come Thursday. You know, we, we, we feel the winds, we feel the, the, the corn swing in the wind, we, we feel the trans, evapotranspiration, the corn sweat, right? The humidity at night, when it comes up at night, when it comes down in the morning, I think that's going to have an effect. I think, I think it's just going to be the most unique place to hit a ball ever. To tell you what it's going to do, man, I, I can't wait to see it myself. As final preparations took place on Wednesday, MLB officials and all of those involved in the project took time themselves to take it all in. The special moment to actually walk up and see this live uh, that we pulled it off. Um, we're about 24 hours away, but it, we're, we're so so close to it. And you know, when you go ahead and watch, I've watched the movie a couple times in the last week. To to be able to bring an actual game here and tie it together with the movie, it's just a really special feeling. For the lucky fans attending, it will certainly be a unique experience. But the hope is. Is that all fans watching or at home can come away with the same conclusion. We think it's important for the fans that come in person and also the fans that are watching on TV to make this feel like more than a baseball game. We think that baseball is such an important part of our community and society and the movie tells that story so dramatically that we feel like we want people to really feel that and experience that. And according to reports, Kevin Costner will throw out the first pitch tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. How appropriate. Wow. That'll be cool. pretty darn cool. That is, that is neat. That is, that is really cool that they did that. Yep. All right, we'll see how it works out. May have to watch that one. May have to watch SA Live as well. Yeah. We hope you are. Yeah, Kevin Costner is going to be at Green Hall August 25th and 26th. Oh, really? Playing with his band, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't know he played in the band. Uh, are you do now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing we do know of, there are 29 library branches around town, and we have got Robin Alcorta from the Landa Library, San Antonio Library Branch. How are you? Hi, I'm great. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And great news for parents, because you are now open one more day out of the week, right? That's right, starting Monday. This Monday, August 16th, we are going to be open every Monday from now on. We've been closed Sundays and Mondays throughout this whole pandemic, so we're looking forward to seeing you guys. We're open 12 to 8 o'clock. We are going to be making some crafts, uh, talking about books, and also, hey, if you know you can't do the new math to help your kids out, the library can. We'll tell you about that. <laughs> yes, and ladies, want to get in shape like a professional boxer? Jen is going to tell you how. That's right, we're here at Leha Boxing and Fitness with Jesse James Leha, two-time world champion. And we are going to talk about their women's classes, but also, Jesse, you're going to put me to work, right? Yeah, Bridget, All right, let's, let's go. go. Fight. We're starting now. 30 second fight. Let's keep going. Woo, back to you guys. Head, body head, body head, body head. And oh. once up an easy, you need a snack after that boxing workout, easy yes. fun meals for the kids and for the family. Yes, we'll JTA Wellness is going to show how to make food fun. And hey, by the way, back to the library, I forgot about this. Social question. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. was your favorite book as a kid? Let you know us what? know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, even if it was your favorite series.